All right, guys, so in this video, we are going to be working with Git. And Git is basically project tracking software. So for this example, we're going to generate a sample Rails app and then work with the various basic Git commands and features. If you like this video and you want to learn more about Git and or Ruby on Rails, you can check out my course and get 50% off in the description down there. So without further ado, let's get started. Hello everybody, today in this video we will be working with Git and the best way to work with Git is to have a lot of files generated. And what better way to do that in a Ruby on Rails course than create a Ruby on Rails project. So I'll say Rails new in our terminal and we'll name the project test for Git. Okay great, so now Ruby on Rails is generating all these files for us and you see it's creating an app called test for git. So I'm going to change directories into test for git with cd in my terminal. And the first thing is I'm going to list out all the items. So you see these are all of our Rails files. These are all the files that Rails generated for us for our application. So in order to add these all to git, the first thing is we need to do git init. And you see if we press enter it says initialize empty git repository which means it created a git repository. Now all we have to do is change the empty part of that statement by adding stuff to our repository, to our project. So I'll say git status, and this will show all the stuff that hasn't been added to our git repository, which is a lot because it's everything. And in order to do this, I'm going to add something by doing git add and gem file, which is a file listed above. Now if I do git status again, you will see that gem file is no longer there than when we last did git status. Now obviously we're not going to do this with every single file as we go along, and the simpler way is just to do git add dot, which adds all of the files. So you see if we do git status again, it doesn't show any new files that we haven't added yet. Okay, so after that I'm going to clear our terminal and now we need to commit this. We need to publish what we've added. And in order to do that, what we'll do is we will say git commit dash m for message and then inside of two quotation marks we'll name our message which in this case is going to be initial commit because all of the first commits, all of the first published things are always initial commit. So sweet guys, that's Git for you, and I will see you in the next video. All right, so for this Git example in learning Git, I have a sample Rails project open, and I have just done a bunch of crap to this Rails project, and let's say I wanna fix it. So this is a problem that you might actually encounter a lot in Ruby on Rails. And the fix is a lot simpler than you might think. So for instance, instead of having to revert back and you don't really know what you might have changed because you changed a lot of files, Git can help us by reverting to the previous commit, by deleting anything that we did except for everything before we committed whatever we committed. And this is why it's good to commit often. So first I'm just going to type in git log. And what git log is going to do is it's going to show me all of my commits and when I committed them and all that stuff. And in order to close out of it, I just press Q and then I'm back in the terminal. So I'm going to revert back to the commit that says patching up devise sign up. So the commit is right there and I'll just copy all of those numbers and letters and all that stuff. And then I'll say git reset dash dash hard and then I would put the name of the commit or the commit ID. So I go up here and it's going to be that right there. And then I'll paste that in there. And all we do is press enter and you say head is now that commit patching up device sign up. And just like that, we have fixed our file. So sweet, I will see you in the next